show. So, are you gonna introduce me? Yeah. I don't want to introduce myself. Okay, so um, thank you everyone for showing up in one of uh, our seminar. Um, so today it's a great pleasure to have uh, Professor George Martins as a speaker. Uh, Professor George is a, a, a long time friend. We met, I think, first time in 2005, a uh, long time ago. And since then, we have been working together, a few papers we have published already. And, and finally, I, I, I managed to convince him to come to uh, Federal University of Berlanga. So we are pretty happy for having him as professor here. So he got his undergraduation at Unicamp. I, I told him I would skip the uh, the dates because you know. Please, please. Was, yeah. <laughs> and his uh, master and PhD degree also was got in, in, in at Unicamp. In '95, I think I have to mention, he went to Tallahassee and for a postdoc position with Elbio da Gotola, as far as I remember. And then uh, he moved to uh, Oakland in 2004. And later he went as a sabbatic, uh, for a sabbatical at Oak Ridge in Tennessee. And he came to Bologna and he actually he spent a couple of years or maybe one year at Federal uh, University of Fluminense, right? Yes. Um, one year? Uh, two um, years. Two years. Two. Yeah. So then he came to Bologna in 1999. Oh, 19, yeah, <laughs> 2019, sorry. Uh, 2018, 18. 2018, okay. 18, yeah. So today he will talk about ferromagnetism and fat band in armchair graphene and ribbon topological heterostructure. structure. So Professor George, um, the microphone is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Okay, so uh, I have to uh, thank thank very much the the introduction, my uh, good friend Professor Vernacki, uh, and I have to thank myself for inviting myself because I, as I am the organizer, I um, I uh, didn't have anyone to put uh, to speak today, and then I decided to speak myself. So uh, today I gonna. Uh, I hope introduce you to some uh, interesting material. Before that, I want to introduce the uh, group members and uh, collaborator. This is Patricia Assis Almeida, who is doing a, a master's with me. Uh, Lucas Souza Soares, who is doing uh, an IC, with me, uh, initiation of scientific uh, research. Uh, and uh, Professor Mauro Schmidt, uh, everybody, uh, all of you know him. He is a collaborator and he is doing the DFT calculations while uh, my students are doing the type binding calculations. I, I, I didn't do much, I am just taking the, the credit for their work. So, uh, the initial theory that was the motivation and experiment that was the motivation for this work is in these very nice papers here. If you are at all interested in this uh, subject after I convince you that, uh, or I try to convince you that is interesting, please take a look at these, uh, these papers. Uh, I, I have to, uh, I, I did a little sneaky thing here. 
Uh, all this research that's mentioned here was centered on the topological aspects of these heterostructures that uh, I will introduce. But uh, that's not really the case for us here today. We're going to talk about another, another, another subject. But it's our intention, because this is very recent, this uh, work is still under, is, uh, we are still working on that, but uh, it's our intention to move next to investigate the topological properties of these systems. So uh, I should start uh, motivating the uh, working uh, flat bands and correlations. So this, uh, this paper, uh, or these papers by uh, Pablo uh, uh, Ejero uh, have suggestions, I should put here, of unconventional superconductivity in twisted bilayer gra graphene. Uh, I should call your attention here to the, uh, to the units. So this is millielectron volts. So these bands here are really very narrow. We could even call them uh, flat bands. That's how they are called in this paper. Here is the uh, graphene dispersion which, that's shown here. So it's really a very concentrated density of states here. That, that's what has given origin to the unconventional superconductivity that they observed. So uh, correlations. Uh, for them to be dominant in a system and give you origin, for example, to unconventional superconductivity, they have to, uh, uh, to be of the order or larger than the kinetic energy in the system. And uh, a good estimate of the, of the kinetic energy is the bandwidth. So we want to have a situation where you, the uh, the local Coulomb repulsion over W, that is the bandwidth, is of the order of one. So I put here the band, band structure of a tight binding chain, uh, which uh, whose band wide, uh, width is uh, given by 4T, where T is the hopping between the, the sides in the chain. And this in materials varies uh, if it's an S or P band, varies between 6 to 12 electron volts. Uh, so, as it's very hard to have control over the, over the Coulomb repulsion, one way of increasing U over W, because you really need a large value of U if you have a band that's that wide, uh, is to manipulate the lattice, the lattice to decrease W, as they did here. The twisted bilayer graphene is a system where you are uh, manipulating the lattice by twisting one, one, uh, one graphene against the other to uh, get to a band structure that around the Fermi energy is very narrow. So in that sense, even if U is small, the bandwidth is so small that you get to a situation where U over W is of the order of one or even larger. And then you can see uh, magnetism and conventional superconductivity, so on and so forth. So today we want to talk about really, really flat bands, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you examples of that, and we're gonna discuss uh, these uh, properties. Uh, the discussion of correlation effects in, in flat bands is uh, is an old kind of old discussion. So if you are interested on that, I put here some reviews that you can look at. But the, uh, this discussion, uh, at least the one I saw in the literature, until these, uh, these, uh, these systems here. It was quite academic because uh, you would see papers in uh, journal mathematic physics, uh, nothing applied, because the lattice where you can get flat bands, they are very hard to find in nature. Uh, they are very artificial. Uh, so uh, how do you build a system that has a lattice like that? Uh, because I assume, because of the, uh, all the hype that has been 
uh, going on around this, I shouldn't say hype, we use hype in a, in a pejorative sense, all the excitement that is going around uh, these results here. Just in this last year, 2021, and we are still in, in September, there have been 17 papers on archive about flat bands specifically, uh, not flat bands, but flat bands. Uh, sorry for the typo here. I just add that was the last thing I added to this uh, to this uh, talk. Uh, what called my attention to this subject, where besides the hetero structures, was this paper here from 2009, where they were studying the properties of these flat bands, and he, he, this is really a flat band. All the energy here is completely flat in these two bands, in these armchair graph graphene nanoribbons. And the states that make up these bands here, they are really uh, like that. They are located on a single unit cell. I'm going to explain how you can get that. So much so that they, in this paper, they they give uh, they they do them as vanier orbital states. Uh, it's clear that since uh, uh, we have a block state, it has translational symmetry. But uh, due to a uh, quantum interference uh, effect, the uh, the the coefficients of these states in these sites here, they are exactly zero. So, uh, as all of them have the same energy, I can make a linear combination of them in a way that I can uh, have a new basis where each state is located on a single unit cell. So, that's a uh, really uh, interesting and is discussed in this paper here and in other papers that discuss discuss flat bands. This was a kind of well-known effect for people who work, who work in flat bands. So uh, what happens here? So if I can work in this basis, I can think that I have, uh, I, am, I am filling up this band here with uh, one electron per per unit cell, let's say. So I have one electron here, one here, one here, one here, and they are uh, completely isolated. There is zero overlap between them. So one way I can make a, an effective low energy, a low energy model for this, uh, for this band is to think about a tight binding chain with no hoppings. So as there is something very interesting here too. These colors here are supposed to indicate the following. All the coefficients in this state here are exactly, the, it have exactly the same magnitude. And if you are on uh, gamma equals zero, uh, you have just a, a change of sign here. This is positive and this is negative if you are here. And both of them are positive if you are here. And if as you move uh, along the Brillouin zone, there is a, just a change of phase, the coefficient, the magnitude of the coefficient keep, uh, keeps being the same. There is a change of phase of the coefficient here in relation to the coefficient here. So uh, what the electron as there is zero overlap between these two states here, what the electron is doing here is just hopping from one side to another. Imagine that you have the electron density here and it hops to this side and vice versa. So the local energy for each one of these states here is plus minus T, the hopping. And uh, as you can see here, the energy of the bands, the energy here is in units of T and here is exactly one and minus one. So my model here will start like that. But as I have a high degeneracy here, any small perturbation can lift this uh, degeneracy or 
if I think about spins, as no spin can hop to from one side to another, you would have a, la a large degeneracy of states here. However, uh, as I said, any small perturbation can lift this uh, degeneracy. But as these pins here cannot hop from one side to another, there is no way to lift this, uh, this degeneracy other than if you count with the states from the bands that have dispersion and that cross this, uh, this flat band. So let's depict one of these states, is a propagating state, so it's an extended state, as this uh, oval here. And let's think what happens if the, uh, uh, the electron uh, visits one of these sites here. Uh, in something that you can really interpret as just Hund's coupling, these two spins, the spin that is located here and the spin of the electron that is visiting the site from this dispersive band, uh, they will couple, uh, will couple as, as a ferromagnet, with a ferromagnetic uh, interaction. And this is just Hund's coupling. Uh, that's the way that they will keep the largest distance between one another and then the, uh, the, the Coulomb repulsion is going to be uh, uh, smaller. So uh, these guys here studying this system, they did the uh, DMRG and the FT calculations and showed that if you dope this system, uh, if you remove electrons, if you dope with holes, because uh, if you have half filling, all the sites are occupied here, and then the magnetism is frozen. But if you start to remove electrons and you bring the Fermi energy to the level of this band here, then you empty part of the unit cell and then the electron of the dispersive states can visit the, uh, the unit cell and be polarized by this spin here. And as he visits the other uh, unit cells, it polarizes the other spins in turn. So the end result is that you have a completely polarized band that uh, uh, renders this system uh, a, a ferromagnet. And as it's very easy to dope uh, the systems with an electric field, uh, that becomes an interesting, an interesting subject. So, but what about our heterostructures that I didn't introduce to you yet? Do they have a flat band? Yes, they do. And in reality, they, they don't have a single uh, flat band. They have many flat bands. We, we discovered that. Uh, let me introduce to you these, uh, these heterostructures that look like that. The chemists, our uh, neighbors here, they uh, develop this uh, kind of synthesis here that they can make really, really nice systems. This is an AFM picture of a system like that. They are really, uh, really perfect. Uh, what is drawn here is exactly what you have here. Uh, the interesting thing about these systems is that uh, they, are, they are topologic. Each one of these strands of uh, armchair nanoribbons has a topology and has an, an invariant topological index that can be either zero or one. And see that this here is wider than this side here. So you have an edge here between the two of them, where if you have a change in the topological index, you expect a protected edge state here which is depicted here by the density of states of this, uh, this edge state. So if you have a system like that, that's periodic, you have many edges between uh, topologic and non-topologic. So you have a sequence of localized states, of edge states, whose overlap is gonna depend on the structure of your of your 
nano ribbon. So the hopping between this localized state and this one will depend on the uh, uh, width of this region here, and the hopping here will depend on the distance between these two modifications that I made here. So I can make this modification wider and change the overlap, and I can make the separation between the modifications larger and change this overlap. So what, what uh, uh, effective model describes that? The sushi refer Higer model. This is a, a, a dimerized chain. So uh, in a, I found this uh, here, I, I copied literally the description. Uh, this is a hierarchically engineered one dimensional topologic, uh, topological system because each one of the pieces of the system is topological by itself. And you have trivial and non-trivial topology, and this gives origin to the edge states that when you combine them, you can or you may get a, another topological system at low energy, because you may have the uh, right values of, uh, if you if you choose correctly the length here and the separation here, you may have a TN and a TM that put you in the, uh, the non-trivial uh, phase of the SSH model. So you build a topological system using topological bricks, let's say. And this is a tight binding uh, a tight binding simulation of this system here, and this here is the uh, low ener uh, energy effective SSH bands. So this system has a gap because it's uh, it's a, a an armchair nano ribbon that you uh, expect that it should have a gap, but inside the gap you have the bands for the SSH model. And this is an experimental paper, it's a collaboration between experimentalists and, th and theorists, and they investigated many different uh, hatchery structures like that, and they give very convincing results showing the presence of a topological end state in one of these their systems that they show is in the uh, non-trivial side of the SSH phase diagram. So the initial theory that describes the bricks, let's say the, the pieces that make the, 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 uh, the heterostructure, structure is uh, this paper from 2017 from uh, the uh, Stephen Louis group. Uh, these uh, they, they came with a recycled theory, I'm gonna put uh, between uh, quotation marks, that is more uh, complete. They base their uh, analysis here in, on the spatial symmetries, and here they base the analysis only on the chiral symmetry of each strand of your, or let's say each one of the pieces of your heterostructure. Uh, so all this research is very new. The, the experimental paper is from 2018. So investigating the um, many, many citations that they have already, I noticed that a lot of the stuff that uh, uh, on uh, topological aspects, obviously, had been done already. Uh, so we decided, uh, I decided that, uh, well, we cannot compete with these people around the world who have big groups, big machines, and uh, large collaborations, so we're going to try to look for something else. So our idea it was to look at the, we noticed the, the presence of the flat bands, and our idea was to investigate the, uh, uh, the ferromagnetism in this system, because I, I didn't see any paper on ferromagnetism on that. So before uh, advancing, Let's uh, understand the uh, nomenclature that we're going to use to describe these heterostructures. So we can create two types of, uh, of uh, periodic uh, heterostructure. What is called the staggered, that is the one in the previous slide, 
that has it's staggered because the uh, the periodicity is like that, or you can have what is called inline uh, hetero structures, where you do the extensions of your armchair nano ribbon on top and on the bottom. And then you repeat that here, repeat that there, and make a, 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 a periodic heterostructure. So what are these, uh, these indexes here? So N is the uh, width of the backbone of your heterostructure. So we are counting here the number of dimers that you have in the unit cell. So one dimer, two, three, four, five. My unit cell is this here, okay? So the uh, capital N is the width of the backbone of my heterostructure. What is uh, uh, lowercase n? Lowercase n is the number of unit cells of the backbone that I gonna modify. So the first modification, I put three additional benzene rings here and here. So this would be an N equal one heterostructure. If I modify two unit cells, uh, adjacent unit cells, then this is an N equal two. If I modify three, it's an N equal three, so on and so forth. An M is the separation between the new unit cells, because I have a unit cell here that's as big as that. I can choose to put the unit cell at a distance one, measure from the center of the, uh, of the borderline uh, unit cell that was modified here. But in this case, I would just have a complete uh, uh, armchair nano ribbon that instead of having five, a width of five, would have a width of nine. So I have to start in n equal two to have uh, something that is really a heterostructure. So I would start making the modification here. Okay, would put a benzene ring here, here, and here. Uh, this would be an m equal two, here an m equal three, and what we have here is an, sorry, it's an m equal four. So we have three parameters to control the properties of these uh, heterostructures. Besides the two types of heterostructures that we have, we have staggered and inline. In this, uh, in this talk today, I will only show results for the uh, inline heterostructures. For a good reason, we don't have results yet for the staggered uh, heterostructures. So uh, these are the bands for a pristine, no heterostructure, there, there are no extensions. I just want to show here you, well, I didn't mention that, but uh, any uh, uh, armchair nano ribbon has these uh, bands in N uh, plus minus T, uh, I'm sorry, in, at energy plus minus T, all of them. Uh, even the, in reality, even the uh, graphene, uh, a, a 2D, Graphene also has these bands here, but they are overwhelmed by the other bands and you don't see any of their effects. But here, for example, uh, we have a third of the bands are flat in this case. So you expect that you're gonna, you're gonna be able to see their uh, effects in a system like that. So here is uh, the uh, charge density of this band here. Uh, this was calculated, and I show you here, this is an N equal three uh, graphene nano ribbon. I show you here, I put another benzene ring here, and not here, and I have a, an N equal three armchair nano ribbon. So this was calculated uh, this way. If I have here the Hamiltonian for, the, for my system, uh, these are the bands, N equal one to six, each one of these states can be written like that. On this I here is uh, one to six are the uh, states, the P state, the PZ states uh, here 
on my unit cell. So what I am showing you here in a, in a polar map is just this calculation here. I is the charge density for the uh, band uh, minus T. Okay, for the for this flat band. Uh, I'm showing you that in a little bit of detail because you're gonna see a lot of these uh, plots here along this top. So let's go to the to the uh, results. So for a tree AGNR one tree, so n is equal one, m is equal three. So I have one, only one unit cell that was extended and they are separated by a distance of three unit cells until I have another one, another one, another one. And see, we have one, two, three, four flat bands here. So it's a, a, a multitude of uh, flat bands. And very interestingly, the plus minus T flat band number three is still there at exactly the same energy, plus minus T. And even more interesting, it is double degenerate. And uh, its charge density is here. And uh, as it's double degenerate, and I am integrating over all uh, values of K, because uh, why did we do that? Because if you, if you pass an STM on top of your system, and you tune it in a way that you are looking at the density at this energy, that's what you should see, because you are seeing all values of K at the same time. That's why uh, this here is uh, the closest that you can get to, uh, to simulating what an STM would see if you tune it to look only at this band here. So as we have two bands in reality here, it's uh, double degenerate, uh, looking at specific values of K, we investigated some values of K here and looking at the states, one of the bands is this one here, so it's very reminiscent of the Vanier orbital states of the pristine uh, armchair nanoribbon, and the other one is kind of similar too, because in the region here, you would expect that, as I showed you in the previous slide, that that Vanier orbital that represents the band in plus minus T should look like that. So you get a hybrid of yeah. the two of them. Yes. Yes. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead. The double come from the uh, action symmetry about the, the ribbon, or do I have, it's spin, it's spinless, right? Spinless model. It's uh, uh, up to now is spinless, yeah. Right. So perhaps you, you have some reflection symmetry about the center ribbon. It, it's not exactly that. I, and uh, I will tell you why soon. Uh, because okay. this, this only happens for n equal 3 and n equal 5. For n equal 7, they are not degenerate anymore. So uh, that's, a, that's a good point. I don't know, to be honest, what is going on here. Because I was expecting to see this uh, degeneracy all the way through, if it, was, if it was coming from symmetry. But apparently, it doesn't. So I am, I am really impressed by these, uh, these little guys, because they have some really interesting properties. Uh, so yeah, uh, I will comment on, on sure, I will comment uh, on that more later. So the states for uh, the first band here, they look like that. They are, they are really cute, right? You see that they accumulate on the, on the, the edges of the unit cell. And there is a little bit of, of density of charge density here in the center, just a little bit. Number two, band number two looks like that. 
the states associated with it. None of these are degenerate. Only band three is degenerate. Uh, so I, I would expect have if I have any perturbation that uh, I would start seeing hopping between one unit cell and the other, and this band here would acquire uh, dispersion. And we're gonna see that that's what the, the FT calculations tell you, that these bands here, they acquire dispersion. And this we can more or less predict that because they are very, very close by the charge densities here. And the, oh, sorry. And the uh, states for band four are like that. For the same reason as the uh, charge is accumulated here, uh, close by between uh, adjacent uh, on the edges of adjacent uh, unit cells, uh, we expect that this here will acquire dispersion too. If you introduce a uh, spin orbit, uh, other orbitals, or if you do a if you do an honest calculation, a DFT calculation, not a a model calculation, that's what we are doing here with the uh, type five. So, uh, Nelson has a yeah. question. Yeah. Okay. If, if, if you can speak, Nelson. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You can, you can, yeah, she has some microphone. So you can read, you can read the uh, question. If you want, I can read. Uh, sorry, I, I, it's, it's breaking down. So you have a question in the chat. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, okay. May, may, may I continue? No, I can read it for you. Yeah, uh, well, wait, uh, because I have, uh, let me see here. Let me go to the chat. Uh, I don't think I can get there. Uh, yeah, I can. We so there is a yeah. question you were saying. Uh, oh, Nancy, right. in which form does that work today? I'll do my camera. Okay. I wonder if the degeneracy you see is not produced by the amateur degeneracy when the ribbon is metallic. They change from metallic to semiconductor depending on the widths as far as I remember. Uh, I would have to think about that. The, 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 the thing is, uh, I give you this, this information. Uh, for n for n equal five, they are degenerate. For n equal seven, they are not degenerate anymore. So, and if I do a DFT calculation, there is a slight uh, lifting of the degeneracy. Uh, well, you expect that already of these uh, of these bands, yeah. yeah. So I I. I really, I really don't know, but I will take note of all the suggestions that you guys have because I am, uh, I am planning to, to, to take the most juice I can from this uh, system because it looks very interesting. Uh, so, uh, let me take this out of here. Uh, so, if we, if we, Start so let's start changing the parameters that we have available here. If we start changing the widths of the backbone, the bands start looking like that. So see that uh, the impression that I have here is that when you do that, you are uh, changing the hoppings between the localized states in the cases where you have localized states because this dispersion here and this is more clear here. Uh, well, let me say something before. Uh, the flat bands, uh, at least the ones close to the Fermi energy, they survive up to n equals seven. Uh, although apparently the plus minus t bands, they survive for all values of n. They are very, very robust. But you can see here that this band is flat, this band is flat, but this band here has acquired a bit of dispersion. And we have seen for 11, 13, so on and so forth, it's, 
it doesn't acquire much dispersion, but acquires a little bit of dispersion. But we didn't investigate that yet, but I am sure that this here is the SSH dispersion. This is the dispersion of the effective model that I have inside the gap, uh, as I mentioned here. And this is very interesting because I, in this case, if this, if we are in the uh, in the in the SSH phase diagram part where it's a non-trivial topology, you have a flat band crossing a topological band. And if you can make this flat band uh, a ferromagnet, you have a low dimensionality uh, really uh, available in the lab system where you have a topological system that is ferromagnet, is, uh, is ferromagnetic. So that's the, one of the things that we want to investigate uh, next. So uh, that's the uh, how the states for the uh, n equal five bands uh, look like. Notice that the fourth flat band we didn't put any state here because it has acquired dispersion. But uh, band three, two and one are still there. They are they are very flat. They are completely flat. And uh, uh, the flat bands that plus minus t are, uh, t are still degenerate. So one band is given by this state here, and the other band is given by this state here that kind of intrudes in the middle of the other state. Uh, see that uh, here we expect already to start seeing dispersion clearly because the whole system is connected. But strangely enough, this, this guy here uh, still belongs to a flat band. So uh, for the seven, we have this here. And then here is where the flat bands uh, at plus minus T are not degenerate anymore. And uh, the state, uh, the state for band number three, the plus minus T band, is exactly there. And this is extremely robust, it seems. And this here should give you a, I assume, uh, uh, because it has a dispersive band on top of it, it should give you uh, a ferromagnetic, uh, it should give you uh, uh, some ferromagnetism. Not much, because you see, uh, the spin for this state here is localized at the center of the unit cell. So there is a lot of room here for the visiting spin to stay away from this guy here. So it doesn't, although, well, what, what I'm trying to say is that the exchange splitting here should be small. So the, ferro, the ferromagnetism here shouldn't be too strong. As we're gonna see, that's the case. Uh, so now we, want to investigate the dependence with n, uh, lowercase n. Remember, lowercase n gives you the size of the unit cells, or in other words, how many unit cells you are modifying in your backbone. So that's the one I showed you already for three, for n equal three. So this is three, one tree. This is three, two tree. 3, 3, 4, 3, and 10, 3. Uh, well, here we have a insane amount of flat bands. Here we have a bunch of flat bands too. Uh, but as they don't have anyone dispersing on top of them, at least in the tight binding calculation, we don't expect to see uh, any ferromagnetism here. But I was uh, curious to see because see, there is this flat band here that tends to, to the Fermi energy. So you have a flat band at the Fermi energy for the undoped system. I wanted to see what is the, uh, how does this guy looks? 
we already looked at that, this guy here and we thought that, uh, well, probably it's going to have dispersion. And uh, that's how they look, as you expect. You just uh, keep having this guy concentrated at the edges of the unit cell. Here you have a little bit of charge density. I can see it. Uh, I don't know if you can see. There is a little bit here, but here is empty already, and here is completely empty. So I could, I could, uh, I could think the other way around and take as the unit cell of my system this here, instead of taking this and this. Nothing prevents me from changing the position of my unit cell. This shouldn't change the state. I would have the state, the state concentrated here and would be disconnected from the other state in the other unit cell. So this should be robust too. So as you go from here to here, I expect that you're gonna become less dispersive and more flat. So that's something that we have to investigate yet. Uh, dependence with M, remember, uh, uh, M is the, the separation between the unit cells. So now I am uh, with uh, capital N equal three. I am keeping N, uh, lowercase n equal one, the smallest possible uh, unit cell, and I am increasing the separation. So I have two. I am not showing the result for three because I showed you already that and it wouldn't fit nicely here. Uh, M equal four, five, and 10. Uh, see that uh, qualitatively, I have more bands, sure, because the unit cell is larger, but qualitatively, it doesn't change much, although, and this is for uh, N equal five, lower, um, uppercase N equal five, and the same sequence here, one, two, one, four, one, five, and one, 10. But I am interested in this guy here, and this guy here, because this here looks like the SSH model band that could be topological and uh, non-trivial or not, the same thing here. And the topological band would provide the dispersion that could render this guy here, here ferromagnetic. So I could study the interplay between ferromagnetism and topology for this system here if I am lucky, right? If I am in the right side of the phase diagram for the SSH model. Uh, so now we, we get to the grown-ups stuff because tight binding is for kids. So we were, uh, uh, myself and the, and the students, we were playing around with tight binding and uh, Professor Schmidt who did the DFT is doing the grown-up stuff. So these are the DFT bands, and I put the tight binding bands here to uh, compare. And we see that, uh, well, tight binding doesn't do that bad of a job. There is not too much difference. You see here, uh, these are the four, the four uh, flat bands. Although this one here, as we expected, kind of, because uh, we developed this knowledge after uh, looking at all the data in reality. Uh, but you could tell from the beginning that this guy here probably would acquire some dispersion. This guy here. As expected also, the, the degeneracy, and you can see this here, see that there is the green band here that's perfectly flat, which is the one, this is the plus minus T band, right? This one here is the one where the uh, Vanier orbital state is really concentrated at the center of the unit cell. And the other one that the, uh, uh, the its flatness was lost and it acquired a little bit of dispersion is because that uh, state was more spreaded all over the, uh, the unit cell. So any perturbation in spin orbit or this or that would render 
a connection between, could provide a connection between uh, different uh, unit cells and then uh, result in dispersion. And the, but that was expected already. Um, also as expected, uh, N4 acquired a little bit of dispersion too, because it was located at the edge of the, uh, of the unit cell. Not so much like this one here. So it makes sense that there is more dispersion here than here. So uh, on, a, on, a, on a kind of a dig on, uh, on Professor Tomé, who did the DFT calculations, uh, the conclusion that we, we get with these results here is that tight binding is so powerful that it can predict the DFT results. So we kind of knew everything that the, that DFT uh, was going to show us, uh, just looking at the results at tight binding and at the uh, charge density for each one of these things. I, I, I hope that Professor Tom, uh, Tomé doesn't take this seriously, right? So that's what, why I put this here. Uh, as it's true, we know that we only got to these conclusions after we saw the results here. It could be because the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the opposite, yeah. Okay, so here is the DFT results at zero doping. So as you, going back here, uh, remember the discussion I made about the uh, Vanier orbital states? If you are at half filling, the unit cell is completely full. You have one electron in each side. So there is no Hund's coupling possibility. You cannot have uh, Hund's coupling uh, because the if any electron is going to come visit, all the sites are occupied already, and this electron will have to uh, go with the spin opposite to the spins that are there already. So to be able to see the ferromagnetism of these bands here, uh, you have to start doping. You have to empty the unit cell a little bit so that you can have the uh, home scalping effect. So, and that's exactly what happens. So here is the, uh, the Fermi energy, and this is for uh, uh, when I remove 0.1 electron from each carbon in my system. The, unit, the Fermi energy is here now, and uh, you have these two different colors, uh, blue and red. Blue is the spin up and red is the spin down. So indeed, the system becomes ferromagnet, uh, ferromagnetic, and this here gives you an estimate, this energy here gives you uh, an estimate of the exchange splitting of the system, so of the, uh, the ferromagnetic exchange interaction that you have in your system. And when you dope uh, quite a bit more, now you take 0.23 electrons from each carbon, in your system, you see the Fermi energy is here and the exchange splitting is huge, really, really big, indicating that you should have a very healthy um, ferromagnetic state in the system after you dope with uh, 0.23. Uh, so these results here, uh, they show against whole doping, so going from zero to 0.35 uh, electron uh, hole per carbon uh, for two different uh, heterostructures, uh, three AG AGNR13 and five AGNR13. And what is that here? That is the, the difference in energy between a state with maximum spin in the DFT calculation, and the a state with, uh, with minimum spin, which doesn't necessarily is zero, but if you call this paramagnetic and this uh, 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 as a ferromagnetic state, then if this difference is negative, this means that uh, your, ground is, your ground state is, is ferromagnetic. And you see a difference of uh, uh, 
0.15 electron volts per unit cell. So this is uh, strongly, strongly ferromagnetic. So uh, Professor Tomek, and uh, later if you have questions about the details of the DFT calculation, as I said, I didn't do much. I'm just taking credit for whatever other people did. You can ask him the questions on this part of uh, 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 DFT. So another thing that we, both of us, not, uh, not only myself, but uh, Professor Tomek too, was amazed was uh, when we compared these states coming from the FT and these states from tight binding. So I had showed you that already, and these are the states that uh, come from the DFT calculation. And this is a full DFT calculation. So this is for the band three. This is for band three also. Remember that uh, when we had the degeneracy, this was uh, the charge density. And uh, look at that. This here is the same as that. And this here is the same as that. There is no difference. So the FT and tight binding are showing uh, exactly the same. Look at this one. I don't know if you can see here, but this one here is very clear. So it's exactly the same thing. And uh, this here, it's kind of hard for me to see here, but there is something here and here that is the same here. It's this, even it's stronger here than it is here. So even the details are similar. There is a little bit of charge density here, and there is a little bit of charge. No, no, here there is no. There is none here, but there is a faint charge density here, which is shown here. So this, to me, is important. It's very good news, because when we want to study, study correlations at a model level, we have to start with something for our band structure. We cannot do DFT and then put correlations on top of DFT. What we do in general is we do tight binding, you get the bare bones that you need, and then you put correlations on top using RPA, using uh, mean field, using this, using that. Uh, but you, you, you have to be sure that your initial model that comes from tight binding is giving you something that is uh, is uh, it's honest to God, and that that is very good news. The fact that we get something from tight binding that uh, is uh, reproduced by the FT is good news for us who do uh, strong correlations. So I am uh, gonna just flash the conclusions here because I. Um, kind of late, it's one hour of the seminar, everybody's tired, uh, but I, I, if I can just come back to this here, I, I would prefer instead of talking about the conclusions, uh, to talk about what we want to do in the future. We want to explore the possibility of uh, mixing uh, strong correlations, ferromagnetic system, with topology, if possible, and see that uh, we we have only uh, we have only studied uh, this kind of system, the inline one. Uh, we have still uh, other possibilities that to start to investigate this uh, staggered system. So I I I, I finish this. Uh, this seminar in a rush, I didn't put a slide with a thank you, but uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, I am ready for, I hope, I am ready for your questions. Thank you, Professor George. Talk. We are now happy to take any questions and if, if you have one, 
just uh, open your mic net or if you prefer you can i would like to in the chat go ahead let's say yeah, okay uh, two questions thank you very much george it was really very interesting because you have discussed uh, something very important but frequently we are testing our our time mind model with the dft calculation it's very important to have it uh, just from the, the, the very beginning, uh, comparable with the DFT results to go on. That's a good, a good point to, to, say uh -huh. to, to say to the student also. But uh, uh, there are some points that I would like to know how are you going to, what mod are you going to put your correlation? Because I'm trying to, to make some calculation with a, a mean, mean field approximation. You have some, having some uh, results, not with the, the nano, graphene nano river, but with uh, Kagome uh, lattice, and it will be very interesting to know how are you going to deal with that. And another point is that uh, uh, from, uh, taking into, into account the, the, the very, very first uh, point to start, if you have a, a zigzag nano ribbon, that will be not the case because we, we have to put the, the correlation in order to get the DFT result, isn't it? Because we have a gap there when we have the, the DFT results in nano ribbons. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, you, you mean for the zigzag? You for the zigzag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, uh, for the zigzag, uh, you, you will always have the edge states that may be, may be ferromagnetic, right? Uh, because they are degenerate for, for the same reason. They are degenerate and they are uh, flat. They produce a flat band. And because of that, you may have the, uh, the ferromagnetism, right? Yeah. I know that there are EFT calculations and uh, mean field calculations. I'm not, I'm not following very closely the, uh, the this discussion on the zigzag edge state ferromagnetism. I know I look at that some papers to have an idea of how this was being treated there. But see, the mechanism here is very different because those uh, those edge states there they are not like these uh, Vanier orbitals here. Yeah, yeah, completely different. They are completely different. They are extended. So there are um, what I have seen uh, was uh, or mean field, I think. This I mentioned here, I didn't, I kind of looked at these uh, results, uh, these calculations. I mentioned here that, uh, let me enlarge this here. Here, here, okay. That this guy is here did the DMRG calculation for this system here. So what I I don't know if uh, Adrian is there. No, Adrian is not there. But I talked to Adrian. Adrian is a specialist on DMRG. I talked uh, talked to him about doing uh, DMRG for this kind of system here. And he said that, well, it's possible. These guys did for this. We can try to do the uh, for this one here. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the other the other question you did you ask two questions or one? No, no, no. What what kind of of uh, uh, model you are going to put into your your tight mind model to include the correlation? But you. you uh, I am thinking about doing a stoner analysis. I don't know if uh, how how exactly to do that yet. I would have to think because you are you are not doing that at half filling. You have to go uh, put a new there. And, uh, but uh, it's a uh, it it could be could be a way to go. Is doing a stoner analysis. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, all right. Any other question? Hi. 
Make your hand. I, I, thighs. Hi, I'm Sergio. Sorry, I'm, hey, go ahead. I'm having, tr I'm having nice trouble you. connecting. Um, how are you doing? Nothing, nothing. Hi, Sergio. How are you? Great. So, um, what's up with the beard, man? <laughs> it's uh it's uh we we are going to join the taliban <laughs> anyways now i my my question is a little bit of a follow-up to andreas in that so it in the dft calculation the the it is almost like a mean field is it true uh where where is tome tome that's for, that's for you Oh, oh! I'm sorry, Sergio. I was listening. Can you repeat, please? I think Sergio is uh, frozen. He said he said that uh, the DF is almost like a mean field calculation. Is that true? Right. Is it? Yeah. We we include the the one quarter of uh, exact exchange on that house. So. Well, we don't have correlation, but we have something. It, it's kind of mean field. I would say the DFT is a little bit more than that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we capture that, yeah. I mean, sure. Okay, so so because people do these uh, DFT plus U sometimes. Eh? Yeah, I tested that too. Hard but, yeah, but I... I, I, I I think use the the hybrid functionals, which include part of the exact exchange, which is uh, we, we describe better those those interactions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. And the the other question, uh, and again, sort of follow up to this. So one. Having problems. Yeah. Sergio, you are breaking. You are breaking out. I cannot hear you. Sergio, you you are breaking out. Oh. Yeah. Yes, Sergio. I'm using PBE on the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The question was from Mariana. <laughs> oh, yes. Mariana. 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 I don't pay anything here. Oh, yeah. Not yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a PBE and the first uh, results, and then we include the uh, uh, HSE, right? Uh, where the exact okay. exchange is included. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's an hybrid, it's a mixture of the, uh, mm -hmm. three different uh, hybrid functionals, right? Mm. Okay. I, I I would have a question to myself. <laughs> that, is, that is the following. Uh, yeah. Uh, but then, I, as I don't know the answer, that's why I am asking the question. Uh, the question goes to uh, the audience. What what the interesting thing, if you if you are working in this field, what interesting thing would you you would you want to know if I can mix uh, non-trivial topology with with ferromagnetism? What would be the things that you would go after to uh, that have not been seen yet? Because I, the the appeal of the system to me, and uh, maybe I I should have shown that here, is that. Uh, these are the experiments, the STM experiments for the, and they are looking at the charge density here, and this is the charge density of the, the SSH uh, 
uh, bands. So they are really uh, what they were uh, expecting, that is this here. So look at this here and look at this here. So the effective model is really an SSH. So, and if you are in the uh, non-trivial part of the phase diagram, if you add, if you add ferromagnetism on top, would you see anything? Would you expect something or you wouldn't expect anything? And uh, we are just uh, uh, looking at something that's cute, but it's not interesting. That's my, my question because that's what we are planning to investigate next. So if anyone has a, has a dig on that, um, but I think that Sergio is gone because uh, they don't pay the, they don't pay the yeah. bills there. Yeah. Ah, oh, no, he's there. But he, he's, his microphone is off. Yeah. So probably. He's muted. He's... Uh, but, uh, I have one question. Uh, yeah. You you are breaking you are breaking off too. No nobody is paying uh, the internet bills anymore. We don't pay here. George. Don't, yes, go ahead. Uh you told that about the beginning at least about the the Z uh Invariant, topological yeah. invariant. Yeah, yeah. And I was wondering what are the nature of this, of this, and this, because this topology may possible to produce this uh, flat zero energy, right? At least I'm not sure. Uh, so my my question is what essentially of this because for instance you have that right at the base or in this region you have an edge state is in blue. Uh -huh, is this uh -huh. zero zero energy state? Or so this these are zero energy states, yeah. But the thing is, as you have uh, you have them side by side here. Uh, so the they they overlap, and there is a hop in between them, and then uh, they acquire dispersion. So they move out of the uh, equal zero. They hybridize. They hybridize. Okay. Yeah, so that's exactly the idea. You want to form this system here. Okay. Okay, that is it. I think I was I was breaking the generic uh the number of yeah, number of types uh, perpendicular the, the degeneracy right. of yes. this band yes. here. Yes, yes, at some point you depend on the number of layer or, or type, right? The uh the width the width of the so you have this yes you have this case here which is degenerate n equal three you have this case here that's degenerate okay. and then this is not degenerate anymore take of the ribbons uh, you just make the ribbons wider right in this sense you do you change the the topology of the the system by keeping uh, the width of the ribbon. Okay, so that that's the whole that's the whole problem with the remember that I mentioned that the initial theory mm -hmm. that uh, discussed the presence of these states here uh, was based on spatial symmetries. So they made a table there that said, well, if you're if you're on a ribbon. If your piece of nano ribbon is like that, then Z2 is uh, zero one. They even have a they even had an equation for that. Uh, uh, I mean, Stephen Louis group. 
uh, and you, uh, you can calculate and everything. Z2 is zero, Z2 is one, and then you know if you're gonna get an edge state if you put the two of them together. It's like a, a, a manual for getting edge states or not. But then it turns out that uh, it, di it didn't work for all cases. So then they moved to uh, what I assume is a more powerful uh, investigation of what is going on, where don't, they don't use any spatial symmetries, they use only the chiral symmetry. But that is a kind of a, a uh, complicated paper that uh, I am still working on it. And that's the next step that uh, uh, that, uh, that Patricia is going to do. I don't think we're going to get any interesting results for her thesis, but these results here are going to be in her thesis too, and uh, she's calculating uh, thermoelectric properties for these systems too, so that we want to submit to another paper, to, to another magazine. So I don't think she will have time to to master, uh, I, I didn't have time yet, I am still working on that, on understanding this part here that describes apparently in a complete way this question of the uh, topology of this topological index here. They even changed the index. The, the index is not Z2 any, anymore, it's a gamma oh, index. I see. And uh, it applies to many different types of uh, unit cells and uh, so on and so forth. But uh, it's it's kind of complicated. As I am still kind of new with this whole story of topology, uh, sometimes I struggle with some of the concepts there. Uh, I decided that, well, let's investigate other things in these this systems. But uh, as I said, uh, and the next to investigate would be uh, the possibility of having uh, topology and, and, and ferromagnetism together. One, thank you. Uh, Seth has one question. You can read it yeah. if you want. Would you add the spin can, orbit can, and see how the very enter is you add? Uh, yep, yeah, I could do that. Yep. Yeah. I could. I, I was thinking about that today. Uh, reality. Uh, I think uh, Patricia has already code where she does uh, spin orbit. I'm not sure. I'm not remembering now if we did that or not. We embarked on that, but that, that's something that I thought as a follow-up for this work, is to add spin orbit. Uh, Mariana has a question here, no extra, but would guess it depends on the robustness of this charge density, how the transport will develop. Uh, I'm not sure what point she's uh, she's mentioning here. Probably, probably she's uh, your question. Ah, my question. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I gonna I gonna I gonna uh, talk to her if she has some thoughts on that. I will talk to her by email uh, once we start. Um, are really working on that. Once we send the paper, then we can start thinking about uh, new things to do. So any other question? Marcelo Cruz, those typing, do you have or again, we can get a, a couple yet. Uh, yeah. No. Two questions coming. Uh, question question coming. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Sergio is leaving. Hi, Sergio. Sergio.
Are you calling the Hmm. Yeah. All right. So, no extra question. So, um, no other questions. So, um, uh, Marcel is I, typing. Let me see. Came, yeah. yeah. The question came. Yeah. Can I study the laser spec phenomena in these graphene structures to see the dynamic system changing over? Time I am an undergraduate student. Uh, I don't know what the laser speckle speckle phenomena is. See the dynamic system changing over time. Uh, I I don't know what this 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 phenomenon is. Um, so we maybe. Um, Maybe you can send me uh, you can send me an email and then uh, we can discuss that in detail maybe because I would have to to understand what this drop, drop your I think as your email yeah uh, let me, yeah let me put my email yeah. here so if any anyone has a uh, So if anyone if anyone has a question that uh, or a comment that wants to send to me directly we can we can discuss uh, he, he is still still typing okay. it's a good idea to wait um, let me see in the meantime anyone he will send a uh, message. Thank you, Marcelo. So, if there are no further questions, thank this. Thank you, George, for the talk. Thank you. Thank you for the exciting visit. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, I hope we get. Uh, Oh, okay.